Okay, let me just share my. Perfect. Wonderful. Right on time, too. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just pulling up to share my screen so that I can introduce you. So we do have a guest today, and uh, I'm going to have you, let me see here, kind of introduce yourself. But I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, Lori and Allie, thank you for being here today. And um, this is um, a friend and colleague of mine who is also a therapist, and she's going to talk about um, some exciting things. And... You know, I still have trouble pronouncing your last name, and I apologize for that. Oh, <laughs> so no worries. I, it's it's Kakasik. Kakasik. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, um, this is, a, who is she? So here's some background information about her, but I'm going to kind of turn it over to you. And um, if you want to just kind of introduce yourself, um, I'll keep this up here. But, you know, if you could talk a little bit about how your how you got into counseling. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful uh, story a long time ago. Uh, you know, I, I grew up always wanting to be helpful to people. Um, and I always loved nature on top of that, just so you hear that part now. And um, I literally was in um, music and theater in college because I loved singing and dancing because it just it made me happy. And I did that when I needed to get some relief from life. And also I wrote poetry. And all of a sudden in my junior year, I was wondering, what am I going to do? Go sit out in front of Goodman Theater and have my living like that? And so I thought, what else do I love? And I thought, I've always loved helping, so I'll become a teacher. Well, I became a um, middle school teacher, and uh, in my first year of teaching, ironically enough, I looked around at these boys and girls. I'm busy trying to teach nouns and verbs, <laughs> and they had things coming in their minds because of how they grew up. Yeah. And I decided, wait a minute, I need to do life in a different way. I need to give back um, in a way that I can. So I became a I became a counselor, and that was the purpose. And it also was helpful to me, obviously, as a person. And I started out at Northern a long time ago, uh, and I moved ahead and became um, a therapist in an agency. I was lucky to work with Steve DeShazer for a little bit of time. Um, and I studied with um, Dr. Milton Erickson in the early 80s and neurolinguistics. I was a huge proponent of that. Anyway, just time moved ahead and I uh, was a family therapist, but also as part of a school system, which was unusually different. Wow. So I served the whole uh, Kane County schools for mental health reasons. And so I loved that. And then along the line, I said to somebody, because I loved horses as well, and I began uh, involved, um, I think it's 25 years ago now, um, with horses, using them as therapy. Um, I had gone to Chile for a vacation, rode horses there. I had always loved riding and came back and um, decided I really wanted to have a horse. And so the other part of my life said, really, how are we going to do that? And I went, I'm going to use it for therapy. And that's how that began, quite oh. honestly. And along that line, I wanted to write an article. And I ran into a professor from Northern that said, I said, is there a class I should take for that? And uh, they said, yeah, like your doc. I'm like, okay. So that's how I began my doctoral program oh. um, with that in mind that I really truly wanted to give back uh, even more so with, um, the, with animals and nature. I was lucky enough to work eight years with uh, juveniles that came every week from jail. And that was wonderful for me. Hmm. Um, and hence then I've added other animals and I have a wonderful animal assisted therapy uh, place up in Marengo with a person that I helped um, supervise for her master's that she has now, thankfully. Um, and she's also an ABA therapist. And so we see a lot of um, kids, but I was also a special ed supervisor in the past. So it sounded like it all came back to in full fold. How do you like that? Oh, and I like think that's circle. part of what life does. Yeah, it just pulls you around holistically into all those pieces that you always loved. And it comes it comes to fruition in many different ways. Um, I do have a really nice office in downtown St. Charles. And I'll be honest with you, it's lovely to have a nice couch and a chair. <laughs> um, but I love, love, love working with people using animals. Um, pigs, 
Uh, we have a new baby lamb. He's only a year old. Oh, he's so sweet. Um, ponies, donkeys, dogs, cats, um, and a lot of horses. Wow. So you have uh, like a little farm. It's wonderful. And yesterday, yeah. for example, I had a parent that brought their um, child that's on the spectrum, but, um, and the little sister who is four and my huge big draft horse knows how to be a therapist as well. And so I open this, this stall door and he just bends his head all the way down and doesn't move. Wow. Why the child just petted him. Wow. Like, wow. It always makes me kind of teary because I can't believe how wonderful animals are and what we learn from them and nature in itself, you know, um, there's a great new book. If you've not read it, it's by Dr. Kimmerer called sweet grass. And it's, um, she is, was, is still as a Potawatomi, uh, person that's an ecologist and, um, talks about how everything in nature is alive. Yeah. And I think that is exactly what I believe. I and mean, I, my trees, they live, they talk. Yeah. They have their own communication patterns. And I, I think that about all the animals that I have in our, in our world are, our birds and, uh, you know, all the flora and fauna have special ways to speak to us. And so I think, I think for me, that's what really has motivated me to continue to move ahead with new parts of my life, like animal assisted therapy. Um, and there's not many people around here that do that. So I'm really happy about building a new program for that. I started a certification program because I truly want to have other people that do what I'm doing. Yeah. I want to form a community of, th of therapists that, that uh, use animals like I do. So I really love that. Um, and of course, I focus on trauma and depression yeah. and anxiety and PTSD because those are my favorite things to do um, because I really believe that the animals speak and uh, the clients pick the animal that they resonate with. I mm -hmm. love that story because I would like, I would like, I wouldn't pick that guy. <laughs> Right. That horse is like young and huge and a little bit uh, scared of life. And uh, one of the people that I just wrote an article about picked him to get past some trauma when they were from eight years old to 15 mm. and picked that horse because the horse imitated what she was feeling. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so she felt connected to him because he was scared of life like she was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing amazing so it is pretty amazing it is pretty amazing yeah I mean I think I, I you know I, I agree with you just like kind of you know how like animals and even nature around us tends to have its own supernatural communication and absolutely we don't we don't always understand it and we're not mm -hmm. maybe meant to but yet I think at the same time when we're open and receptive to that, yeah. we really can be in alignment with it. And it's, exactly. it's pretty amazing what happens when we stay open and aligned mm -hmm. and, and receptive, you know, to that communication, like, and yeah. it sounds like you kind of experience that with animals and just in the nature, yeah. the community that you've built is that you see this communication with, mm -hmm. with, with the, um, Okay, fauna and flowers that you mentioned. I don't know Flower what the fauna. term is. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, the term is, you know, but yeah. with also the animals, you know, and just nature oh. in general and people mm -hmm. have resonated with that, that we seem to get like nourishment when we're out in nature, you know, and right. around right. living um, things so much more than when we're in a metropolitan area, so to speak. Right. Um, you know, one of the things I, I want to just go to this, you know, kind of like, you know, how, how has your, I mean, how is your life experiences? Um, you know, cause when we initially talked, you had talked a little mm -hmm. bit about your life experiences and, and yeah. how has your life experience kind of informed how you do counseling, you know, cause there's this yeah. big kind of, um, you know, myth about therapists, of course, that we're like, you know, ooh, ah, we have no problems. And we're <laughs> like, you know, all these, like, we have everything under control. And, uh -huh. and you know, I, I, for one, I've told you a little bit about me, mm -hmm. and I've shared on this podcast about my own struggles, you know, with, with anxiety and alcohol and everything. And, and, you know, just recognizing that we're human too. And, and, right. and also at the same time, sometimes that's what makes us more effective in what we do too yes. because we understand that kind of mm -hmm. place of, of where it's coming from but 
So, you know, with, with our listeners right now, how has your life experiences informed what you do in particular with working with animals too? I think, well, I will first tell you that one of my very first pictures as a kid was in a cowgirl outfit. Oh. <laughs> and um, I grew up in a very, um, sometimes very violent home. Mm. And I used animals as, as my background to be able to look at life in a different way. I've been reframing since I was three, I swear. So I reframe, and that's how I lived life was to, that's how I got through was to balance that out. I just reframed everything. Oh, this happened. And, and now I can do, do this with that. Um, and so I think that was huge for me. And that's how come I wanted to become a teacher to give back, to help somebody else that couldn't quite get it. And that's why I became a counselor because I still have that part of me that knows that life is full of, full of stuff. And it doesn't change overnight. And the more that we can give back and be kind and see the best in other people and other things and reframe it, the more we can move ahead and the more we can find, I think, life's gifts. Hmm. So I think of my life experiences, it's, that's how I was raised and uh, very different. One uh, part of my family members would say, you got to be kind to everybody because you never, you never know what they happened to them the night before. That was my mom. Yeah. yeah. And my dad was always like, just be proud of who you are. And like, you know, I took the left with the right. I took the yin with the yang. Yeah. And which is why I reframe. And so I got that. I'm like, oh, okay. And so I grew up knowing that I needed to listen to people and not expect things and know that they had a tough time. Hmm. So I think that's how come I did what I do. And I infused animals because growing up when I if I was stuck in the car and there was an argument going on which happened all the time um, I would pretend I was riding a horse next to me in the car oh, and that is how come I'm so drawn to animals because of the peace that that brought me and that I knew that they knew me if that makes sense mm. and you know you know and we know now that um, horses mirror um, not emotionally because they can't, they don't know how to do that, but they pick up on our energy and they just model it. And so they're the best co-therapists I think I could ever have. Um, and dogs and cats, dogs try to make us feel better. Obviously they want to jump on us like, don't, you don't have to be sad. I'll take care of it. Um, which was lovely to have that growing up. And I always rescued animals and I still do. And I think again, that's in rescued people. I think that's part of who I am. Uh, with that modality of the animals, especially. Um, and cats are very smart and interesting. Mm -hmm. And they're not as um, physically engaged, but they engage in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And we have a cat that engages with one particular um, person that's uh, really struggled in life with a lot of trauma and is on the spectrum and 22. And that cat will disappear. But as soon as he hears that boy's voice, he comes running. Really? And so each animal is unique and different, which is I also like, because mm -hmm. that's a model for me about people. Because we are all different and we all have different experiences and we all have wonderful strengths as well. And always we have those little piles of oops that we have to go back and go back and get through again, right? It's never yeah. done. Never, <laughs> never, ever done. Never done. Yeah. And I think I love... I love teaching um, a student's skills, master student's skills and doc students, because that's a part of me that knows that we're not perfect and I'm never going to be perfect and that's okay. And here's some tools in your, in your box to keep, to move ahead. And so I think we all have our own tool bags, which is great to talk about. Yeah. yeah so it's kind of like, you're just, you're always evolving. I know I'm always evolving. And, yeah, exactly. And trying to be a better version of who I am, yeah. you know, at the core. Um, and I think right. part of it was allowing myself to be my core first, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> Which yes, was, yes, yes. And that's also part of it is just yeah. embracing my core first and yeah. then, yeah. you know, evolving from there. And I think, you know, the moment, it, you know, it kind of sounds like you relate to, you know, and I've seen some of this too, is that in the moment that happens, it, it becomes a little bit easier of a process mm -hmm. to, to have that happen when the core is embraced and yeah. authentic, yeah. so to speak. Um, 
you know, you mentioned like this, you know, kind of balancing out this human professional balance and some of the lessons that you've already learned about, about that, like, you know, so, I mean, how do you navigate that, you know, when working with clients, like, um, you know, because we have like this really strict ethical code, you know, and, and, you know, and, and I've always been such a stickler with it, you know, but as I've, as I've gotten older, you know, my human side has been coming out more now. And it's like, it, and I've noticed that like when I was a younger professional, I yeah. was like a stickler for the professional ethics. And right. now it's like, you know what, we're human and I want to embrace that. And so yeah. I'm curious, you know, what are some of the lessons that you've learned about balancing out, you know, the, the humanness and then the so professionalism? Right. professionalism. I love being genuine, first of all. Yeah. Um, people always ask me, what's your theory? And I'm like, well, I have quite a few, more than a, more than just a few. But overall, I always say my umbrella truly is person-centered, that yeah. I'm always thinking about doing no harm. I'm always thinking about everyone has their strengths. Um, and that's just where I come from. And I and that that guides me. And so when I when I have issues when things are not so balanced. I know it because I begin to talk in my head more with clients <laughs> and I call those my like red flags. Uh Oh, uh Oh. And what it means to me is that I've got some kind of transference that's gone on and something has sparked something in my past or in the present, whoever, whatever um, that is in my head now. And so then my focus leaves the client. And so when that happens to me, I take really good care to shift and I shift by literally physically, I have to move a little bit. I got to change my seat. I got to whatever, because that unlocks that part in my head. And I always go back to reflections of feelings with the clients because that also resets me back with them. Yeah. And then afterwards, then I think, oh man, what am I going to do with this new information that's come back to me? Do I, um, how do I handle it? And what's the best way? Sometimes I go back to therapy. Sometimes I just make sure I spend more time with my self-care. Um, and believe it or not, even though I'm using again assisted therapy for a lot of my clients, that is self-care for me in many ways. <laughs> more because, so. I get to, because I get to see them before I work, you know, and then I get to take care of them afterwards. Um, so I think that's part of it. It just, it's infused. Um, yeah. But paying attention to my self-talk is huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, that's a very great point too, is just how we talk to ourselves and and using that as a, as a tool for ourselves in right. terms of, you know, what's going on with us internally. Yeah. And I know for myself, that's also something that I utilize is I, I really monitor how I'm talking to myself and what I'm saying, right. like, okay, right. I, I keep hearing myself saying this to myself, what's going yeah. on with that? Like, that's not a language I've used for a few years, what's happening, you know, right. something in my life is bringing it up. So yeah, so just recognizing that. Yes. Um, and I always recognize it also where it is at in my body. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I constantly ask clients, where are you holding that at? Yeah, where's it at? Yeah. Um, because and I truly believe that, you know, the mind and the body all work together. And so I know, that when stuff starts to happen to me, my stomach just goes like, Argh. yeah. <laughs> and then that self-talk Ugh, gets yeah. very loud, very loud. And, and the other thing is that I really pay attention uh, more importantly to culturally what's happening with people. What's mm. their story? What's their narrative? And what do they want to do with it? And how yeah. does it impact them? So I'm really involved in uh, language as well. Uh, not, um, not specifically the whole sentences, but I'm listening for the themes that keep, and we know that clients repeat, repeat, repeat. If we don't get it the first time, they're going to tell you again. And I listen to what am I missing? What am, and uh, one of my favorite friends that is a great Adlerian at Adler, uh, Dr. Bilke, um, always says to me, it's not about you. Mm. Not about you. <laughs> What's going on is something with them. Oh, yeah, okay. And that helps me too when I get, when I get, my balance off. I'm like, mm. what, what's going on here? And then asking myself those questions about me. What's happening and how and what's happening to me that I'm feeling this uh, instead okay. of engaging with them. Yeah. And that helps me that helps me re-engage and then my balance. 
And do you find that like happening, like when you're working with animals and clients, like talk a little bit about like how, what you see in that process, because people are fascinated by yeah. equine I and mean, yeah. that's relatively new. And yeah. yet people are very, yes. people have their experiences yeah. with their own pets and how right. therapeutic right. it is. Mm -hmm. um, but talk a little bit about what you've seen in that regard. Okay. I love, I love good question. I love talking about this. <laughs> what I do when I, when I have an animal, I really pay attention to the nonverbals of the animal mm -hmm. with the person. And then I can't judge that because right. I'm not going to be biased about that. So I ask, like I'll say, I ask people to build an obstacle to um, move an animal over, around, or through it, like cones and poles or whatever. And then I, whatever animal they pick, that's cool. And then I watch the very beginning of the movement. Um, and I, I also ask them what those things mean to them. Hmm. Like how come the, what's the red pole mean? Or what does the blue cone mean to you? How does that relate to your story about what you want to get through or over and around? So when we choose an animal, then they're with the animal. I'm right next to them. And I watch what's happening and I can, I can see if the animal does something. I can say to the person, boy, Guinea picked up that pole with his teeth. What do you think that's about? And whatever the person says, and that, that's my metaphor for the, for the treatment, whatever the, the, they say that I can use with them, they'll be like, oh, he is so, so mad about something. He just wants to toss it out. And then the next question is, is there something happening with you that you're really mad about that you want to toss out? Mm. And that's the therapy. Oh, okay. So the animals pick up on that energy from the person. Yeah, they do. You bet you they do. You know, what a great, um, it's almost as though they can do for the client what the client can't do for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll tell you, because that happens, it's like a quiet way for them to reconnect with who they are and what's yeah. happening with them internally and to be able to talk about it in you know, a very yeah. very easy way and i love using the animals as metaphorical tools that's what yeah, i do that's really interesting so i yeah. did an equine assisted session once to kind uh -huh. of see what it would be like and not knowing you know a little not knowing right. a whole lot about it of course and I of course picked the biggest horse that everybody was scared of and I was and they're like why are you thinking? I'm like I have no idea I'm just drawn to this yeah. I mean it was like the longest strongest biggest horse there and I was like wow I, I don't know I was just drawn to this horse and it was stubborn as I, I think male horse stubborn and yet so gentle. And I was like, come mm -hmm. on, you know, just encouraging, let's go, yeah. we can do this, you know, I'll let, I'll let you go after this. And it was just such an interesting process. And I didn't yeah. even realize a lot of what was going on until afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it was very similar to what you were saying about how it kind of mirrored what was going yeah. on for me at the time. Exactly. You know, and yeah. it was so interesting because I didn't even realize that until I picked this horse and they were like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. You would pick, you know, the, the most extreme horse. Yeah. You know, and, and I would have been asking what, what is there about, uh, we have a big horse to name chief. What is there about chief that you wanted to work with today? Yeah. And I learned a whole lot more about people asking open-ended questions like yeah. that with everything. And so you said, well, he's very stubborn. And I would have been like, wow, is there a part of you that you think is a little bit stubborn? Oh yes, and, absolutely. <laughs> of there is. And and then you uh, and then talking about how he he got he was just really forceful and, and I thought, well, that's parts of you. Yeah. And or and or it's also like that girl that picked the horse that was just scared like her. It's it mirrors what's happening with the person, not directly with feelings because right. they don't have those feelings, but certainly the energy. Yeah, because animals energy. don't have feelings like we have. But they experience, do they experience emotions to some degree? I mean, they experience pain on a, on a physical well, they level. Can get, they can get angry with, with each other. Yeah. Okay. You know, they can, so they do have that react. Back. Yeah. A aggression, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. They can be aggressive with and, and an affection. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But they don't experience emotions like humans do. No. 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 Okay. So what they're reflecting then, or what they're picking up on is 
the energy that we yes. experience. Yes. It's within that range of emotions that they know. Right. Okay. And it and it really also depends on who's with you yeah. as a therapist, if they can note that and ask you back in an open-ended way for you to be able to identify what is happening. And then yeah. it doesn't matter whether or not that's true about the horse. It doesn't. Right. It matters what you as a client believe is true yeah. and that's happening. And that's your narrative in your world. Yeah. Well, and it and also takes a, a an effective therapist that's trained in this to be able to yes, note and know, I agree. understand yeah. that language. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's just so magical that the simplest little things you'd be like, wow. Yeah. Never, never knew that was going to come out. And yeah. so it's, it's so proactive. Yes. It's, it's wonderful therapy, just a brand new, wonderful way to reach people in a whole new way that the animal helps you get there. Yes. That's why I call my co-therapists because they really are. Yeah. And I have to pay I, attention yeah. and watch them and yeah. ask the, ask the questions that'll fit like little things like, uh, when somebody first starts out with an animal, what do you think that, uh, what do you think that leash is for, for the dog or the cat? And whatever people say that I know that's about them. Oh, it keeps them in control. And help me understand what do you do to have control? So, I mean, that's, you just feed it back. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's really about the animal and the, and the person, not me. No, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just got noticed that we got two minutes. See how much we talk about oh, this. Man, I can't yeah, I know that. it just went by so fast. Sorry. <laughs> no, oh, no, man. don't be sorry. It's been a great conversation. <sighs> um, but I, so instead of going to these questions, I mean, we still had a couple more questions, but I think yeah. we kind of answered them okay. through the conversation. I mean, you talked a little bit about how you manage, you know, you pick up on yeah. your own cues and stuff. And we yeah. did talk a little bit about, you know, the spirituality, what it looks like and how you cultivate it. We did yeah. talk a little bit about that too, because you mentioned just kind of that connection and, and the magic yeah. that's present for you and, you know, being able to kind of take care of that, like that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I want to put your contact information up here. Great. And I do want to open it up to the audience, you know, people that are on live with mm -hmm. us, and also people that are present on Facebook. If there's any questions that you have in the minute that we have left over, I apologize that I'm, I'm only leaving you a minute or so left, but if you have any questions or comments that you want to share um, in this last part, uh, please share them. Otherwise, we'll, we'll wrap up in the last minute. We'll just okay. kind of take an extra minute. I'll just give it a will tell you, I will tell you it's, I don't need www anymore for fields for growth therapy.com. Oh yeah. Okay. Just, so it, it is the new one. Yeah, it is the new one. And it so just you changed just it. it. Wow. Like that fast. You just gave I know. me this information. Last I know I I've been, I work very hard at making life move ahead. Yeah. And I think too, and I think, you know, spiritually, I think every day is such a gift, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And when I, I'm so humble to work with people and I learn so much so much from people and I think and and the animals and the and the trees and the birds um but I think you know that's to me that guides my life yeah and I'm so lucky to have that opportunity to meet people and work with them it's an honor yes I totally agree with you because you know I've done the I've done the same and giving yeah. back, you know, with what I've learned yeah. from people and, and just being able to have that opportunity to, you know, and they say, you know, in some, some circles that you have to give away, you have to give it away in order to keep it. So and, I love that. Nice, yeah. nice, nice said. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we're going to wrap up. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us. Um, Sandra, thank you so much for being a yeah. guest today and being present and sharing your expertise and your thoughts with us. And Pramila, thank you for hosting. And our next session is planned on August 7th at 7.30. So we will see you then. And Serena, we would just also like to let our uh, viewers and listeners know uh, that uh, the date is, the days change from Monday uh, to Wednesday. Monday, to, yes. So it's August 7th, which is a Wednesday. And yes. it'll be on 7.30 at the same time. Yes. All right. So thank you well, all for joining. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Serena. Good to see you as always. Yes, likewise. Take care. Take care, Bye, everyone. everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.